we are going to do a little tier list today. We have got all of the DPS specs lined up. We're going to do ranged and melee in one video. I normally split them up, but we're a bit late with the tier list this season, so we're just going to send it all together. I'm not going to go super in-depth into every single spec because I've done that for every season of Dragonflight so far, but we'll still touch on like their damage, utility, and defensives and all that good stuff. Okay, so we're going to start with the Havoc Demon Hunter then. So obviously Havoc is still rocking the same tier set from Season 3. It's going into Season 4. So it, it's got a great damage profile all around. Like it's got great sustained cleave through the uh, Soul Rend that you, get, you put out passively through your tier set. You've got great single target as well. And you've got decent AoE. In mass AoE, you might struggle a little bit compared with the range specs that are going to be very prevalent next season. But... Rage Fire still picks up your damage a lot in AoE as well. You are hurt by Vengeance Demon Hunter being just outright meta for Season 4 because your Chaos Brand is not as valuable as it would have been. But Havoc still brings great utility. You've got great stops as well through Fell Eruption. You've got Chaos Nova as well. You've got Imprison. So we're going to whack the Havoc Demon Hunter in the B tier for now. What we're going to do is, this is going to be the specs that are guaranteed to be meta. This is like the ones that you could sub in for a meta. This is very, very good specs. And then this is good specs. This is like... Yikes specs, you know? Then we're going to move on to the Destro Warlock. Yes, you guys got it. Destro is going straight in the meta tier. There is arguments for it not being like fully meta, but I just think... With the amount of DPS that this monster of a spec is putting out right now, like, easily does the biggest overalls in the game. Especially when it comes to your Brackenhide Hollows, your Algathar Academies, like, you are just not competing with a, a Destro Warlock at all. It's just not happening. AoE is, like, ridiculous. Single target is respectable. It's nothing to write home about, but it is good. Um, you've also got the two target cleave through your Havoc windows as well. You bring health stones to the group, which is a big W for your group. And you also are, I wouldn't say really tanky. I think a lot of people overestimated how tanky Locke was at the start of Dragonflight. I think Locke in general is tanky, but it still can die. It's a lot tankier than a lot of specs, but it's still not the tankiest spec in the game. So yeah, Destro is definitely a meta pick for me in Season 4. Now we're going to move on to Augmentation of Ochre, which I'm going to whack straight in the A plus tier. Org for me, and well, I mean, Org for everybody last season, and I think this carries into next season as well, depends on how your keys are being depleted. If you don't need the utmost damage out of your comp, then Org is such a nice savior for your uh, team because of its utility. Like you've got infinite stops just through naturally through your rotation. Then you've got your Drakthir um, stops as well. You bring amazing utility to your group. You can literally save somebody every 30 seconds, is it, with rescue. And you've also got Zephyr for the group as well. Like, Org just brings amazing survivability to the rest of your group, which can help if you've got some squishier DPS that need that babysitting. Um, it brings respectable DPS too through the support buffs that it does bring. But... I don't think it's a solid pick for the meta. It definitely could be, but that's what this tier is for. It's for that third spot that is not locked in. There are two that are locked in, but Org is definitely going to be in the higher end of the A+. Also, I wouldn't read too much into how I'm placing them in the tiers. I will try and do it um, respectively, but I mean, if they're A+, they're A+. If they're A, they're A. If they're meta, they're meta, you know? It is a good point about the legendary. It definitely could make the argument for Org being vital to your comp, but I still think it's not as good as the other two that are in the, the meta tier. Demonology Warlock next, which I'm going to place. It could be, I think I'm going to put it, hmm, in the A tier. I don't normally like to detract from specs just because there's another spec in the same class that's better than them. But obviously, if Destro is locked in, then you're probably less, a much, much, much less likely to play Demonology Warlock. Although it does have an amazing damage profile all round. It's got great single target damage, great cleave damage, and good AoE as well through their Dread Bites and Implosions. Tanky, like the Destro Lock, and brings you Hellstones for your group. It does have the drawback of being slightly awkward to kick. 
because if you need to kick a mob that's outside of the pack into the pack, you can't do that as a demo lock because this is just going to stun it outside of the pack and stay there. Also, the other thing is very niche, but you can't sub out your pet for like an imp if you need that for a dispel on a certain boss or something like that. So that just kind of draws it back down from Destro as well. But I mean, A tier is still a very respectable tier. It's a very, very good spec for next season. It's doing a lot of damage. It could, that's what I was saying. It could easily be A+. plus. Like, I'm not saying it's not. But I think with Destro being just lock, locked in pretty much, in, like, in those higher keys, you're always going to prefer to have a Destro if it stays like it is right now. So, if you're not already noticing a theme, it is definitely a ranged season next season. The pools are mega next season. You're going to be doing a lot of big pools, and that is helped by the VDH and its control. So, in turn, a lot of melee are going to struggle to place highly. There are still some very good melee, so I am going to be putting the Outlaw Rogue in the A- minus tier. Well, A a tier but it's on the lower end of the a tier i think i think specs like demo are just better that being said outlaw going in season four is a lot better not a lot better but it is better than what it was in season three because of the trinkets that you're getting access to i know boom's just got nerfed but i mean in big pools it's still going to prop up your damage so that's really going to help the outlaw rogue you got great cryo damage from the outlaw rogue and you got damage for all pools as long as it as long as you're not a fully target capped which is why the spec is a bit lower than usual as a rogue you're pretty much unkillable you've got amazing defensives and also amazing utility as well you've got your shroud so a very respectable a it is on the lower end of a but outlaw is going to be good it's probably the best rogue spec for next season shadow priest is going to be the other meta pick and i think it is just better than destro you've got crazy good cryo damage um so you're just going to be deleting those scary mobs and also just speeding up the key naturally from that it will lose to destro in a lot of dungeons on the overall but it doesn't really matter because you're just going to be speeding up the key infinitely you're pretty tanky as well you pretty much have a permanent 20 percent dr with if you've got your flash heal um dr active and also your fade up you've got your power you got your shields as well desperate prayer dispersion also Shadow Priest was insanely strong in Season 2, so much so that they had to nerf Master Spell because of it. You're getting four of those dungeons back in Season 4, so it's going to, although it's nerfed, it's still going to be very good because of its utility from Master Spell. Also got Power Infusion, which Shock Horror lines up very nicely with this other spec in the meta tier. If not, maybe the other specs that might come in. So yeah, Shadow is just looking disgusting for next season. It is a very, very, very good spec. Where are we putting Assassination Rogue? Because I don't have a clue. I have not seen a singular one on PTR or anybody test them. I imagine it's probably going to go somewhere down in the B tier. It has good uh, funnel damage, good prior damage. But that's kind of where it stops. It's got good single target. It's a rogue spec, so I refuse to put it in C tier because it's bringing amazing utility. Especially with your Shrouded Suffocation. Is that where it silences the mobs or is that Iron Wire? um so you get a lot of value out of your silences from that with your indiscriminate carnage yeah i think aff is just struggling a little bit especially in, in comparison to the other specs i mean subs the other one that i'm not sure on but yeah asa is definitely going to be worse than outlaw did i say aff then or did i say asa the first time next we have the boomkin which i think i'm going to put in the a tier above the outlaw rogue but just below demo i think demo i I think you could swap these two out. I think these are pretty interchangeable. Um, Boomy has great overall damage. It's got like some of the best sustained AoE damage in the game, which is really nice for those higher keys. You've got great single target burst as well, especially in your cooldowns. But it does lack in the defensive department, unless you're sitting in bear form for the whole key. Yeah, I was never on board of the train that Boomy was squishy, but after playing it quite a bit, I have now realized that Boomy is quite squishy. Yeah, so it brings Mark of the Wild, which is an amazing buff to your team. That could be brought from the Resto Druid, but I'm not going to hold back Boomy from potentially having a Resto Druid as your healer, because you might not in Pugs, for example. Uh, it brings amazing utility as well, like Infinite Stocked, which is one of Boomy's biggest pros, in my opinion. You've got your Incap Raw, you've got your Vortex Typhoon, you've got your Solar Beam, which can, just can lock out mobs completely which is very, very nice when paired up with a VDH as well. Like, you can just permanently lock out mobs from casting. I've almost convinced myself to bring Boomy above Demo. 
Uh, so I'm going to put Boomy at the very, very top of A, <laughs> just from the amount of uh, stops that it brings. This is where the tier list should start to make sense a little bit, because I appreciate that A looks like it's not that great because it's two tiers down. But I wanted to save A plus for the specs that are much better than the other ones. Like I think this tier is just a level above, quite literally the next tier down, although Boomy and Demo are very, very strong picks for next season, I just think that Fire and Org, and maybe another spec, but I don't think so, are just A+. Fire's priority damage is just unparalleled. Like, it just deletes priority mobs. Boss damage is incredible as well. It just speeds up the key completely by deleting those scary and high HP mobs. It's unkillable as well. You literally would be trolling if you died on fire. You've got your quarter eyes to save you. You've got your ice block, altar time, barrier, mass barrier, mirror images. Like the list just goes on. This is clearly Blizzard's favorite child. I mean, very arguably could be in the meta. I, I think it will be. Like it just lines up too nicely with the Shadow Priest PI as well. So that is why I'm putting it at the top of A+. But like I said, I think these two specs are better overall and Org could fill that third spot if you don't need the extra DPS from your Fire Mage. It brings you Intellect as well, which is going to be massive for your group. God, I'm kind of just <laughs> considering putting this in the meta tier now. <laughs> Fire is very good. It's going to look a little bit lackluster on the overalls. It's probably going to be like, what, 20% behind these two specs on the overall, but it is all priority damage. The, the thing is, I think why I've put it in A+, instead, is Shadow brings priority damage too, not as much as fire, but it also brings amazing AoE and overall damage to the to the key as well. So yeah, I mean, fire could easily be in the meta tier, but that's the thing is this tier is like you could easily swap these two in at any point, um, just depending on what your group needs. Next, we move on to my old main, which is the BM Hunter, which I'm no longer maining for season four. Not because it's bad though. BM's damage is pretty nuts. Like, it's sustained AoE damage. Even its cleave damage is, like, it's up there. It's very, very strong. It's got great single target damage as well. Problem is, is damage is kind of what carries BM. I'm going to put it in the top of B, but damage is kind of what carries BM. It's actually gotten tankier over the course of Dragonflight, so I wouldn't even consider BM a squishy spec anymore. I mean, I've mained it for the longest time. I was quite often the last DPS alive just through good defensive usage. Oh, look at me. Um, it also doesn't have great utility. Like the raid buff that you bring is not desired at all. You've got binding shot, very niche. You've got a single target stun, which it has over MM, but still with nothing to write home about. It's on a short cooldown, but yeah. It's just like crazy damage you get out of BM, but that's kind of it. Next, we're going to move on to our first C tier spec. Not the only one, but our first one, unfortunately. It is going to go at the top of C, because I do think it has some redeeming qualities. Like, AF's mass AoE is absurd. You guys have probably seen the Algothar Academy video I did. Like, it's mass AoE is bonkers. But again, that's kind of where it stops. You can pump out some... I don't even think you can call it respectable single target damage if you take Dread Touch instead, but you're giving up a lot of AoE for that. Then yeah, that's as far as it goes for damage. You are a lock, so you're pretty tanky. You bring health stones to your group as well. Aft just needs help in the single target and cleave department as well. And then it'd probably be a little bit higher, but again, it just doesn't really have the damage profile for Mythic Plus. Enhancement Shaman, I've kind of struggled to place for this tier because Enhance has been good the whole of Dragonflight pretty much. But it's gone very, very quiet recently, and I'm not really sure why. I guess it's just outshined by other specs. I'm going to put Enhance in the B tier, just behind Havoc. It brings amazing light cleave and also some of the best funnel damage in the game. But again, with it being a ranged season, there's going to be lots of big pulls, and Enhance is heavily target capped, so it's just going to struggle because of that. It brings great stops to your group. It, I think you can talent into three stops, Sundering, if you if you do take that in the next season, you've got Incap Totem and you've also got um, Thunder Shock, is it? Or Thunderstorm where you knock uh, knock them up. So it's actually really nice for pugs because you can carry a lot of the CC um, with that. But I mean, you don't even necessarily need it with a VDH. Super squishy as a shaman. You do have your instant heals on yourself through your healing surges if you consume your Maelstrom, which it has over Elemental. 
but again it's just still super squishy you've got one big defensive you can use your earth alley but i don't even really see that as a defensive honestly especially when you compare it to other specs but yeah enhance is a bit of a weird one it just kind of fell off the cliff out of nowhere i feel like it's still going to be good but just maybe not that great Frost Mage, we're going to whack in A tier. Again, just by default, it goes in front of Outlaw because of the damage profile for next season. It's got great AoE damage, and arguably, I'd say Frost could even be better than Fire up to, the, up to when you get to the higher keys. It's got great uh, single target damage, great cleave damage, especially with your Glacial Spikes. You've got your two target cleave as well. Really good AoE damage. You're going to do more damage than an Ignite Fire Mage on the overall, but obviously it's more desirable to have the Ignite Mage for those higher keys. But Frost is actually looking in a really, really good spot for next season. It's a Mage, so it's unkillable like Fire. Instead of Cauterize, it has a second block, which as we've seen in Season 3 can be more desirable for specific dungeons if you need two blocks instead of uh, one. So... Yeah, that plays into Frost's favor, depending on the dungeon. We'll have to see how that unfolds. And then utility-wise, it brings... Arcane Intellect, huge for the group. And also, I forgot to mention with Fire, but you have two... You have two AoE stops as Fire in Dragon's Breath and Blast Wave. Can't remember if you have Blast Wave for Frost Mage. Probably doesn't make sense. But yeah, just another thing to add on to the Mage resume. Ret is the best melee for next season, but it's not going any higher than A, okay? It's still going to lose out to these specs. I'm trying to think, is, it, is there a world where it could be placed above Frost Mage? Maybe. It ha Rhett has amazing AoE damage and cleave damage. We all know it. It's been like that since the rework, pretty much. But, again, since the rework, we all know that the problem with Rhett is that it lacks on the single target damage. Rhett is pretty much unkillable. You have so many defensives. It's a joke. Um, and also, you bring great utility to the group as well. You've got your Blessing of Sacrifice, Blessing of Protection... You also bring a battle res to your group as well, which is nice. So yeah, Rhett, I think, is the best melee for next season. It just shines a bit more than Outlaw on Mass AoE, which you're going to be seeing a lot of next season. Okay, so next we have the Feral Druid. I think Feral is still slept on. Feral is one of those melee specs that isn't going to be as hurt by the Mass AoE that we're going to see in Season 4. So I think I'm going to put it just above Enhance... It's tankier than Enhance. It's a lot better on AoE than Enhance. The problem with Feral is it really lacks on single target, even with the same tier set going into the next season. It's tankier than Boomy, arguably because you've got your survival instincts. Obviously, Boomy has more armor. And you bring great utility to the group as well. You've got lots of stops. You've got your Incap Roar, Typhoon. So I think, yeah, Feral in the middle of B tier is a good spot. I think people are sleeping on Feral a little bit. It's not an amazing spec, but it will definitely keep up uh, in terms of DPS next season. Back to the sub rogue. Guys, I need your help. I have not seen one singular sub rogue on PTR. I've heard that it does good things. It's definitely going to be better than Asa, but I think Outlaw still pulls ahead of sub. The only thing that you could make an argument for sub is it's going to have better uncapped or mass AoE than Outlaw because of your black powders. But I still don't really know where it goes. I don't think I want to put it in A. I think maybe high B would be a good spot for it. I think I'm going to put sub in the top of B. It's got good mass AoE damage. It's got amazing funnel damage, but you do give up all of your AoE for that, which used to be desired from sub. But then people realize that there's better funnel specs that still do AoE at the same time. It's got great burst damage as well, especially since the rework Shadow Blades actually pumps now as well. And it is a rogue, so you've got amazing utility and you are also pretty much unkillable if you play well. So top of B tier, I think the sub rogue is going. I do think Outlaw is still the best rogue spec for next season. Survival is getting their season one tier set back, which is amazing for priority damage and single target damage. I've played a little bit of survival on the PTR. I'm no expert. And my mongoose bites were hitting for 500k a pop. So survival is going to be putting out some very, very good single target DPS. Which is honestly its biggest strength going into season 4. It's going to lack a little bit in terms of AoE losing the Fury of the Eagle tier set. Which is going to hurt it. But this, the AoE that you can still pump out was surprisingly respectable, honestly. So I'm going to put the survival hunter in the B tier. Yeah, I think we're going to go like mid tier. 
for the survival. I think it's better than Feral. I think survival is slept on. It doesn't help that nobody plays survival, so nobody knows what it does. I think BM is better than survival. But the single target damage you get out of this spec now, while still having good AoE, is going to be better and more desirable than the Feral Druid. You bring less utility. You still have the single target stun like you do with BM. But it's still not great utility that you bring as a hunter. And regardless of the name, you are not surviving on the survival hunter. Okay, so we are on to the arcane mage. Probably the definitely the worst of the mage specs in my opinion. I haven't seen too much of it, but just considering how the other specs are performing right now, I would say it's the worst. It's got great prior damage and also cleave damage. Some of the best bursts in the game. Problem with arcane and going into next season with a lot of AoE is it's quite heavily target capped. So... You're going to be struggling to keep up on the overall damage. It's a mage spec, so you bring your arcane intellect, huge buff to your team. You've got great utility as well, and also great defensives. It does lack in defensives, again, compared to the other two mage specs, so that hurts it a little bit as well. But, I mean, arcane is going to be a very good spec next season. It's like B plus, top of B, could, uh, could be argued to be put in the bottom of A as well. But for now, we're just going to keep it here. The Arms Warrior we have next. I did test this a little bit on PTR, but I was playing the unethical pad build. So I, my single target was not great. But from what I've heard, if you go down into Executioner's Precision, you get a lot more single target out of it and it actually ends up being quite good. They are relatively squishy though. Um, they are, yeah, they're definitely, well, I mean, even compared with their Fury counterpart, they are a squishy spec, unfortunately, which does hurt it. They bring a lot of damage next season. They are looking very, very strong in the damage department. But that is it. That's all they kind of do. They don't bring anything to your group in terms of utility. I think you can talent into Shockwave, but you lose a lot of damage for it. You bring Battle Shout, which would be good for a melee comp, but it's not a melee season, so GG. That being said... I do still think it's a good spec. I think it's going to go in B tier. It's just how high it goes in the B tier. It's definitely not better than Arcane. And arguably is not as good as BM. I think it could be changed out with BM. I think these two could easily be changed out. Like I said at the start, don't think into too much how I've got them placed in their respective tiers. If it's a B tier spec, it's a B tier spec and it's still good has amazing damage i'm not saying it doesn't like if it was if this was purely based on damage it would be like high a a plus maybe but that's all it brings that is all it brings right fury warrior where are you going fury warrior all i've heard is bad things about fury i don't know if i can put it in the same tier as athlock but i kind of want to because i think the other specs are just better than it and b tier is still a good uh, tier to be in c tier is not so good and they need help i think i'm going to be stubborn and put it in c tier still um it's just getting outshined by arms in every single way it's just not doing the damage that it needs to be doing it does have over arms that you can turn it into shockwave e easier i'm pretty sure and it's a little bit or considerably tankier than arms as well because you've got a lot, a lot of self-sustain but fury needs help next season it needs help in the damage department. And warriors only really are brought for their damage. So their damage needs to be good for them to be brought. Elemental Shaman. Ellie's actually really surprised me on PTR. Like from what I've played of it and from what I've seen as well. Like I have been, I have, we did a key with Petco and he was blasting on it. But that is Petco, right? That's like saying I've seen Shelley on Athlock. But it is actually pumping, especially in single target and like, light cleave i mean even in some like bigger cleave scenarios as well it does very very good damage the problem with ellie is it struggles on aoe because earthquake needs to be buffed but i mean honestly the lava bush do kind of carry ellie they're not far off they are not far off at all yeah ellie also has great prior damage as well because of your lava burst and also your ellie blast that you get from your tier set defensive wise though we all know that ellie is the squishiest class in the game or squishiest spec in the game so that definitely hurts the spec a lot and in terms of utility you've got some nice stops for your group you've got ancestral guidance as well for some nice off healing but it's not crazy in terms of utility either i'm gonna put ellie in b tier i'm gonna put it behind havoc 
and in front of survival, I think. Ellie is looking good next tier. No, Ellie is better than Enhance. I think even in Cleave scenarios now, Ellie does more damage than Enhance. You'd get more prio out of Enhance, but I think Elemental definitely trumps the Enhance Shaman these days. Okay, so Marksmanship Hunter. I'm actually going to struggle with where to place this because what I've seen and played of MM on PCR, it trucks, man. It does so much damage. Like AoE up to eight targets. I mean, even you can get away with like higher than eight targets. It is, it is capped, but you still can get away with it because the damage is just absurd. Single target, you have good damage as well, especially when you've got your True Shot cooldown. And also, if you get your tier set procs, which you're going to get during a single target fight, it's just how many you get. So the damage is there for marksmanship. Where it lacks is the utility, because even as a hunter, like I've been saying, you have bad utility. But then MM just goes a step even further because you don't even have a single target stun from your pet through intimidation. Also, for whatever reason, when I play MM, I feel infinitely squishier, squishier than when I'm on survival and also BM. So there is that. It makes sense because of BM, you get the extra health out of your pet. But survival, it's the same defensives. I don't know why. I just always feel squishier. I think I'm going to place MM just behind survival. Better than Feral. The damage that I've seen MM do is ridiculous. Next, we move on to the Windwalker Monk, which has really surprised me. Normally, Windwalker is one of those specs that doesn't scale very well towards the end of the expansion. They normally just like stack verse and call it a day. But with the tier set that they're getting for Season 4, Windwalker is blasting, man. It is doing great damage. And it's not even... Like, it is proc-reliant to get your insane damage, but even if you don't get the procs, it still seems like it's doing very, very, very good damage. So I'm going to put the Windwalker in the A tier. I'm going to put it at the bottom for now. Well, it's going to be the bottom of A because there's nothing else going in A. I think Outlaw and also Rhett are still better than Windwalker. You can probably get more damage out of Windwalker. Hmm. Maybe Windwalker could, could go above Outlaw. Because you've got great utility from the Windwalker as well. You've got a short AoE stun in Leg Sweep, which is actually huge. You've got your Ring of Peace as well. You're a walking defensive of four. You've got four active defensives, I'm pretty sure. And you bring great buffs to your group through Generous Paw and the other one that's in the class tree. I think Windwalker just has more potential than Outlaw next season. You could easily swap these two out, I think. But I'm going to leave Windwalker here, I think. It's actually it's looking very, very good. We have the Devastation Evoker. Dev damage for next season is actually cracked. They're getting their best tier set from Season 2, and that's also been buffed. Their AoE damage, especially burst AoE damage, is bonkers. You're going to have to watch out for your threat generation because you are definitely going to be ripping threat from tanks. And their single target is actually pretty nuts as well. So they have a really, really strong damage profile for Mythic+. Plus. It may start to fall off a little bit in higher keys because their burst will have fallen off by the time the packs are dead. But you can extend your Dragon Rage for years. So maybe that won't actually be a problem. They are not the tankiest spec in the game. They're definitely a little less tanky than Org because you don't have the cheap death that Org brings. But they do have two hardened scales. You've got your Renewing Blades. You've got your Zephyr as well as off heals. And utility-wise, again, you can mention Zephyr for that. The Dev has Rescue as well, which can be used as another defensive. So I wouldn't say they're a tanky spec, but they're kind of like mediocre in terms of survivability. It's either going top of A tier or A+. I think I'm going to go with top of A tier. I think it falls behind these two only just, but Dev is definitely a very, very, very good pick for next season. And then finally, I'm going to do the Death Knight specs together just because I think they are very interchangeable with one another. Frost is going to stick with um, the Obliterate build as far as I'm aware. You've got the Lego, so you're still going to be playing two-handed and the tier set plays nicely into it as well with the crit uh, damage bonus that you get. Unholy, on the other hand, is very cooldown reliant, it seems. It's a little bit better than it used to be because you now have great damage on a 45 second window as well. But Unholy's going to shine on that mass AoE. They're both very, very tanky specs. Death Knight is just tanky in general. They got a lot of defensives in their class tree. You got access to Lichborn, you got access to AMS, AMZ, but I'm not sure you take that with uh, the DPS specs. And then you also have Icebound Fortitude. 
you have some niche and useful utility in death grip but again it is, it's very niche um you got your blinding sleet as an aoe stop as well i'm going to put these two next to each other in the b tier unholy and frost dk next to each other i do think unholy is slightly better than frost especially in higher keys but i think in the keys building up to that frost is probably going to overtake unholy in terms of damage but yeah i think middle of the pack b tier is where the dk specs belong so that is the tier list leave a comment down below if you agree with the tier list what you would put in the meta tier or maybe you would even put something in the d tier that we added halfway Maybe in Athlock, for example.